making the not so obvious obvious. This video is part of Shut Up and Shoot, that famous ebook, you know, the one you should be getting now. Howdy again, and welcome to a quick tutorial on how to use and abuse After Effects for the wrong purpose. Okay, not really. What I want to show you is something that After Effects really wasn't designed for, but it still can be used, and it's a dirty trick for processing longer pieces of footage. Keep in mind, After Effects is a compositing tool. It's not a nonlinear editor like a Sony Vegas or a Premiere Pro or an Avid system. It's really designed to be a composition type mechanism where you can do special effects and layer and do all kinds of cool things. So we're going to use the really basics of After Effects to do this. And just keep in mind, this is not really a, a proficient tool for this purpose. But I like to take tools and make them do things for me that they weren't even really designed for. So off we go. I am going to grab a piece of footage that is a little bit longer than your typical piece of footage. And here we go. I'm just opening up a clip that is 4 minutes and 35 seconds and 22 frames long. Now obviously that is not a good piece of footage for stock because it's way too long. Stock footage should be, you know, somewhere between let's say 2 seconds and 30 seconds or whatever have you. That's a preference of choice. Some agencies even tell you what the minimum is and what the maximum is. The key is you just want to give nice short little clips. Now within this footage, I might have a bunch of stuff. It may not just be uh, yielding one clip, it may yield several. So how do I go about doing that? Well, first of all, I need to make sure that my footage is good. And what I mean by that is that the frame rate is there and that's the most important part. I'm shooting for an NTSC frame rate, which is 29.97, or as people call it, 30p. But 30p actually means 29.97. And it just so happens that the frame rate from the file is 29.97. I knew that going in because I created this piece of footage. And I actually shot this with a Sony A1U. So that was an interlaced piece of footage before. And then I ran it through a little product called Cineform Neocene and uh, it converted it for me from progressive uh, from interlace to progressive so that's kind of cool anyways I'm going to go on to the next step now you notice here that the pixel ratio is 1440 by 1080 that's because the original footage from the camera was an M2T file that was HDV HDV by definition is 1440 by 1080. It has a 1.33 pixel aspect ratio. I need to have this at a 1.0 square pixel. So what do I do? Well, there's a couple things I can do. Uh, I could set up a composition right now manually by clicking on the little composition icon or by going up here and say selecting new composition and that would be fun and dandy but then I have to know and type in all this data 4, 35, 22, yada 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 instead I'm just gonna take the footage drop it onto a composition and now I have a composition that not only has the right length 4, 35, 22 and the right frame rate but it's still got that wrong hmm the HDV format now I could leave it that way or I can expand this pixel out because the way that Sony and many other companies compress their footage for HDV is, is they actually compress the width pixel so if you multiply that width times 1.33 then you actually get to the actual 1080 which is the 1920 by 1080 P type ratio and now we have square pixels so if I go back and I pick HDV, you'll notice that I have a 1.33 aspect ratio. Don't try to change it here, you can't. If you put square pixels here, it's gonna be wrong. As you can see, it's, it's trying something and it's not correct. So just select HDTV 
1920 by 1080 and we're good to go all right so now we have our HDV 16 by 9 everything is good all right so now I have my master composition and I'm just going to hit enter on the name and I'm going to type in a new name and I'm just going to say doc cards because it's doc holiday doing his thing by showing people how the old Pharaoh game was played and how the original real doc holiday used to take everybody's money all right so we're good to go now I'm going to simply hit control D on that composition and it duplicates it so now I have number two I'm going to open that I can close the first one because that's my master I have this extremely long piece of footage which we already know doesn't qualify as stock footage so I am just going to take the work area I'm grabbing the handle this is a work area handle for the end marker and this is the beginning marker and I am going to just clip this piece of footage to an in and out point that I like so it's a little bit shorter now I can do one of two things I can just leave this or I can actually say trim comp to work area but I don't want to do that because if I trim it the next time I duplicate it I'm gonna get the exact same thing so I'm just gonna leave this composition as is doc cards too but I'm gonna duplicate that now and by duplicating it and opening it I have the exact same thing as here except now I can move this work area to a new spot find a new in point and maybe a new out point and have a second composition now I'm gonna duplicate that again open it and now I'm gonna move this work area again and until I'm happy and I see where oh there's a good endpoint oh right there okay so that's my endpoint and then here we go and uh, that's a good out point he's scratching his back okay and we'll do it one more time just for good measure because this is a long clip and I can do a lot of things with it and I might find some really cool footage oh there we go he's flipping cards and then we want to go to right there where the hand reaches in and so on and so forth do one more just for good measure because this is kind of a fun clip to watch and I just moving forward and I don't really want to overlap uh, other clips I just want to keep going forward in the whole the whole video itself because I'm just trying to chip out little pieces of it that will turn into stock footage so let's assume we've got all this done and we've gone all the way to the end we've duplicated and we may have a slew we may have 50 60 compositions here so all I need to do is uh, shift click and select all these compositions right and now I can just basically send them all to the render queue because the compositions are defined by their little work area so I know that all the clips are going to be a little bit different and I can go back and verify that each one is different and we'll go to the render queue and now we have all these comps loaded ready to be rendered but of course we want to make sure that they get rendered according to the codec or specification that the uh, specific agency that you're doing this for will accept so if I leave these all highlighted and I make any changes to the first one or any one for that matter and pick any one of my templates and you can create these templates yourself through make template uh, it will apply them automatically to all of them now if you lose the selection all you need to do is just click on the first one hold down your shift key click on the last one it'll reselect them all again all right so there's my template and then I have my right now I know that this is QuickTime H.264 which is cool but I have alternatives as well so that I can for example go to photo JPEG or a higher quality photo JPEG or even a PNG if I have an alpha channel and again alpha channels are, are discussed in the ebook in uh, section 7 but in any case so I'm going to go with QuickTime H.264, which is a template that I created, 
and just so you can see what that looks like it output module settings I just clicked on the actual name of the template and here you can see that it's the quick time wrapper obviously RGB and under format options I have picked the video codec of H.264 and there's quite a few different video codecs so this is how you can build templates this is actually part of how these templates get built so anyways uh, without further ado I don't need audio so I don't check the audio box because we're going after footage we don't care about the soundtrack and we click OK now we need to make sure that these go into the right place and here we have a directory this is just my demo directory where I crank out stuff for the purpose of these demos and these tutorials and I just so happen to be sitting here but let's say I don't want to go into this directory and let's just say I want to create a new one because this is a new sequence of footage and that's not the correct directory so I'm just going to create a new folder and I'm just call it demo AE files or AE whatever and I'm now going to go into that directory and I'm going to save that as doc cards because that's the name that we gave those comps and that's why you want to name your comps correctly and now let's see what happens if I click on the next one will it go into the same directory look at that amazing it goes right into the same directory and we'll check the last one just to make sure but basically what I'm showing you is that After Effects is pretty smart and it automatically replicates anything you do on one as long as you have these all selected now all these files are queued and now all I need to do is click on render and now all we do is sit here and watch this stuff render no that's not what you want to do you want to create a big batch get a bunch of files done get it rocking and rolling and walk away and go do something else maybe go feed your cat or go shoot some more stock footage or go do something but don't sit here and watch it render your brain will explode it's worse than watching a clock good luck and good shooting thanks for watching 